guys, welcome to our channel. Today's quick video is going to be tips and tricks if you plan on traveling to Thailand with your kids, specifically babies or toddlers. Now we have done this ourselves just a couple of months ago and honestly I have no idea why I haven't come up with this video earlier, but you know, it was time. So here they are, my tips and tricks for you to make your trip planning go much smoother. Number one question people ask would mainly be like, should I travel to Thailand with my baby? If your baby is under one, if your baby is under two, which will technically make him or her a toddler. Um, the simple answer is yes. There are some limitations that you will encounter and that is simply because you are caring for an infant or for a toddler, but that doesn't mean that you cannot go and you cannot enjoy your trip. There are many other things that you can do so the answer is a definite yes. So things to be aware of, vaccinations. You have to keep in mind that you have to allow plenty of time, about roughly a month before your trip. I'm, I'm referring to the adults. Um, there are certain medications or vaccinations that you have to take that will take a couple of weeks in order to start working. So let's say if you're only going to Thailand for about two weeks, if you take your vaccination or medication in the beginning of those two weeks, you're not going to be covered for that specific thing anyway. So make sure you speak to your GP maybe two months before your trip so that you can plan everything beforehand and make sure all your vaccinations are up to date. With that being said, if your child is under two, most probably um, they cannot take any vaccinations. So the problem here would be malaria, mainly apart from the little like gastro and stuff like that that they can get from upset tummies. M malaria would be the biggest concern. So the recommendation is that if you are traveling to Thailand with a, with a toddler or baby under two, is to avoid jungle areas. You will see mosquitoes anyway, like in hotels and stuff, but if you avoid jungle areas, you are reducing the probability of like a malaria infected mosquito biting your child. Another thing to be aware of is visas. Now we travel there, we are Maltese nationals, so we do travel with Maltese passports. And uh, there was a whole confusion. We ended up spending like three hours in immigration. I had to buy a flight um, there on the spot. This was just like miscommunication. Speak to your embassy if you have to, to make sure you do everything correctly. Especially if you're traveling with a little one who's gonna be sleeping, you're gonna be carrying them. You don't wanna be spending like three hours in immigration like we did in the middle of the night. And yeah, avoid that issue. Now, here are my tips when booking a place to stay. They say Thailand is relatively cheap and that is true, but one thing we found is that if you're just holidaying and you're gonna look for hotels and stuff like that, Cheap is a bit hard to find, unless you're booking somewhere like a um, self-serviced apartment or something like that, which you will be booking for a long term, let's say a month or more. Otherwise, like normal prices will apply. We've stayed at places where like it was close or a bit over a hundred Australian dollars per night. So, you know, it's not that cheap when you hear stories about people booking for a bit more, booking like a whole place for a whole month for a little bit more than a hundred dollars or something like that. So make sure you do your research. But this is what you need to have in your room. Air conditioning. Air conditioning is a must when staying in Thailand, especially with kids. If you're gonna spend the whole day outside exploring, looking at places and stuff, you're gonna get sweaty, you're gonna get hot because that's just Thailand and having air conditioning in your room is a real blessing. Like we've stayed at three star hotels and we've also stayed at like a guest house type of place um, and it all, all of them had air conditioning, which was great because it really helps you cool down and relax at the end of the day. Another good thing to know is that um, most hotels, at least that we stayed at, um, have a rule that kids stay free if they uh, share the same bedding. So we would order like a, not order, so we would book like a queen size bed or a king size bed where possible and, and we would co-sleep. We co-sleeped anyway, um, so this wasn't an issue for us, but, and I think the age is like 12 and under. I'm not sure, you have to check the hotel rules of course, but yeah, if you share the same bedding, you don't have to pay extra for your kids. Sometimes you can book a crib at an extra cost. Or sometimes you don't even have to do that if you're taking your own port port a cot And my last tip when it comes to booking is try and book a place that offers a buffet breakfast. 
Now, if you're just traveling, you and your partner, you know it's not an issue to get up early in the morning, walk around, try find somewhere where to have a breakfast. But if you have a little child with you, you know how it is. They wake up hungry, they, have their, they need to have their routine. And breakfast is like the meal that's gonna set you up for the day. So when you do book a hotel that offers buffet breakfast, that is the place where you are going to find the most familiar foods that your child is probably used to. Like if your babies or toddlers are already eating solids, you will find eggs, you will find uh, pasta, potatoes, little sausages, yogurts, fruit, cereal, and there will be lots of options. It's worth paying the little bit extra at the hotel to have buffet breakfast included. And we would also always like eat very well in the morning, snack during the day, and then eat out at night. That was what we did. Now, tips regarding transportation. Taxis are expensive, especially if you've just arrived in Thailand. You will get like people storming at you like to book your taxi from inside the airport. When we arrived, we were exhausted. Like after like a nine hour flight, we had delays and stuff. Then that issue at immigration, we were so tired. We just booked this, the first guy that came up to us and it was like, it wasn't even double the price, it was quadruple the, the price. We just booked that and we just wanted to get to our hotel. Another occasion where we had traveled from Bangkok to Krabi, we had learned our, our lesson. So the, the trick is you just walk out. Walk outside where you will find lots of taxi cabs. There are even shared vans that you can book and, and they will be like one third of the price that you will be booking inside the airport. Obviously there is also public transport if you want to do that. If you are in a city like Bangkok, that is not an issue. It is very convenient. But again, depending on the time that you arrive, depending on how tired you are, how tired your kids are, you might prefer like a taxi here and there, which is why I'm just letting you know that walking out is the best option. Like I said, in Bangkok, the metro is pretty reliable and it was very, very convenient. We used it numerous times when we were in that city and um, there's tuk-tuks, you know, stuff like that. There's also motorbike taxis. We didn't end up ever going on one because we had like an, a toddler at the time, um, but it, that is also a transport option. And a good thing to know is that you don't really need to take your car seats. Thailand doesn't have any car seat laws. I mean, I know some people are against this. I come from a country where car seat laws aren't very um, strict anyway, so I did. I have held my baby in the car before and I had no issues doing that. But yeah, it's Thailand, like, you don't have to take your car seat. Food. Food can be a real issue, at least it was in our case. I have a picky eater, um, which is my partner, my husband, <laughs> and uh, my child as well. He was a toddler at the time. He had recently started eating solids and little bits and stuff. So the transition to a new um, food culture, I suppose, didn't like hit him very well. As I mentioned, the buffet breakfast was great because he would like nibble on pasta, have a hard boiled egg, have some toast, and that really, really helped. But when it came to eating, he wasn't very fond of the street food. So one thing you have to look, look out for is 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven sells lots of snacks, um, like little yogurts, um, coffee, little breads, little croissants, things like that that you can snack on your, throughout the day. You can even buy bread. Dairy products are always expensive, but I did like always buy yogurts for him because it's something that he was used to having. You can either buy your snacks from 7-Eleven and my main tip would be watch out for supermarkets. If you see a supermarket or when you're booking your hotel, make sure there is like a supermarket close to you uh, because they actually sell foods. Now, we didn't discover this until our like last week in Thailand, um, but when we were staying in Phuket, we were staying in Patong Beach, there was a supermarket very close to where we were staying and next to their bread section, they had like ready-made foods, ready-made hard-boiled eggs, ready-made noodles ready-made rice, ready-made fish, ready-made chicken. Uh, had I known before, that would have been extremely, extremely helpful. Because if you are going to eat out during the day, it is going to turn out to be more expensive than you thought. So yeah, it's a good tip to know these um, places where you can find snacks and stuff. And another thing, 7-Eleven, you will find one in every corner. 
and uh, that's where you can buy your water from, bottled water. Make sure you stick to bottled water, especially for your kids, um, because you don't want to risk them getting sick over like this little water issue. Our hotel room will also have a mini bar fridge, and wherever we stayed, the hotel actually provided two small bottles of water a day, which is very, very helpful. But we are big water drinkers, and especially with the little one, if you're gonna feed them formula, if you wanna sterilize anything, you need to get the big bottles. So we just bought a big six pack bottles from 7 Eleven, and we did buy the 7 Eleven brand. It actually tastes pretty good. You know how, like, some waters have weird tastes? Um, the 7 Eleven one wasn't an issue for us, so I do encourage you to try it. When it comes to nighttime, my suggestion for food is go to the markets. If you eat in the markets or if you buy street food, that is how you're gonna keep your budget low. And foods there can be very, very weird. We've seen little foods in like bags, which you would have no idea what they are. And if you are adventurous, then I encourage you to try them. But we are not the type of people, so we would stick to our pad thai and the things that we liked. We found the chicken lady. She would serve like, um, rice with uh, grilled chicken or fried chicken, I don't know what that was, and some veggies, which was beautiful. So we found something that we liked and we stuck to it. And that is my suggestion to you. If you eat from a place and it doesn't make you sick, you know, keep going back there because you know, you know you're not gonna get sick. The night markets um, is the place where you are going to find local fruits. And I do highly suggest that you plan for the day ahead and buy fruits from the market. Now I know people, you hear stories like avoid fruits because they water the fruits with their local water, of course. But you know, there's certain things you can avoid and certain things that you cannot. Like in my opinion, you cannot go to a place and not try their new fruits and stuff. So we bought plenty of food. We used to buy mangoes, we used to buy, they have like giant oranges without peel, it's just the little insides which are extremely juicy. Oh my favorite, the... Thai apple, it's like a cross between a pear and an apple, and it's all edible. Oh, it's, it's one of the best fruits I've ever tried. So yeah, I do recommend that you plan for the day ahead. As I mentioned, you will have a mini bar fridge in your room, most probably, so you can store your fr fruits and yogurts that you buy from 7-Eleven in your fridge so that you can take them out during the day, um, during your next day so that you have things to snack on and you always have a snack at hand for your kids. The markets will also sell fruit smoothies or fruit juices. We had so many of them, like it was something that we had on a daily basis multiple times. So again, like if you want to avoid these things, it's completely up to you, but I just think there are certain things that you can't really avoid. You can always ask for no ice wherever you go so that you are safe you know they're not putting ice in your drink which is made with local water not bottled water and um, a thing to ask i think is i think they they call it tourist ice you can try that because they make it with the bottled water but you know how are you gonna know how are you gonna know if that's the truth now my one thing to avoid is the street ice cream a day before we had like a couple of hours trip from krabi to phuket by then, we <laughs> we saw a stall, like a man selling ice cream, and it was like like a block of ice cream that he would like poke a stick into, and that's the ice cream. And it was taro, it was so yummy. Leo saw the stall, he was excited, so I'm like, okay, I'll buy an ice cream. And we, I basically bought one, and we shared it. And let me tell you, that night, my son woke up having diarrhea. The next morning, I was the one with diarrhea. <laughs> So yeah, like, I would avoid street ice cream. You see those roll-ups as well? We didn't have those roll-up ice creams because I don't know how they're made, but it didn't cross my mind when I actually bought this ice cream it's on a stick. So yeah, if you want an ice cream, I highly suggest that you stick to 7-Eleven and go get yourself like an Algeda ice cream that comes in a, in a wrapper. You know, be safe. Luckily, the upset stomach went away um, relatively quickly. We had like bananas, dried crackers and bread throughout our van trip. And then once we got to the hotel, we actually started eating normal again. With regards to snacks, what I did is I took as many familiar snacks for my son as I could. Like he likes this little um, cereal bars. 
you know, things that he's used to snacking on, I would highly recommend that you take something because you need to give them something familiar because the change in the environment, the change in the country, um, I, I personally find that, you know, if you take their favorite snack or something like that along the lines, um, it will help them feel better if they're feeling a bit uneasy and stuff. Here are the baby items that you would take on a trip to Thailand. We took a stroller simply because we have a traveling stroller, it folds up really small and it's something we always travel with. But Thailand streets are not pram friendly. You will find obstacles, you will find like steps, broken sidewalks. It is not pram, pram friendly at all. So you might actually end up using a baby carrier much more than a stroller but there are just some instances where you will need a stroller. Maybe take an umbrella stroller or something light and inexpensive uh, because you're not really gonna get to use it that much. So a pram is optional and uh, a baby carrier is definitely a must. I, was, I used two carriers during my stay. I had a, a... I don't even know what it's called but I had a material one which was one like just a sling pouch where he could sit on. It was very um, convenient for buses or for trains, you know, for the aeroplane. <clears throat> it's just something easy that you can slip them into. And even though Leo is very heavy for this thing, it just helps me relieve some of his weight off my hand and, uh, you know, distribute across my shoulders. But we also had a structured carrier. The structured carrier was something that we purchased specifically for this trip because Leo was very heavy at the time, he was 11 kilos and for us to be carrying 11 kilos uh, on a daily basis, you know, we needed something structure that would have like a belt to distribute the weight evenly, um, that was something very helpful. Both could wear him, so we did share the load, but it was tiring for us because we were ca carrying Leo, which was 11 kilos and we were carrying our equipment bag with our drone and our camera and our filming equipment which maybe was another 10 kilos so either way each, each of us was always carrying so much weight insect propellant is something very important now I do hear people struggling to find ones that are good for babies you just have to look and you will find I have this um, Kiko, Kiko brand which I had bought in Malta This is actually good for babies and I bought this from Australia before going and this is actually good for kids over 12 months and honestly even if it wasn't good for over 12 months I would have rather used this rather than not putting anything on my son and you know you have to be careful. Another good thing is these citronella stickers. Basically what this is it's a mosquito patch it comes in this little like bag thing you open it it's a sticker you peel the plastic off and you, I, I glued it over here like at the back because it was out of reach I didn't want to put it here and he would like touch it and then put his hands in his mouth and stuff because this has a very very strong citronella sticker <laughs> it has a very strong citronella smell and I didn't want him you know touching it and then touching his face this I think this stays effective for up to 12 hours um, so I did use one of these every single day. Every single day in the morning after um, getting dressed, I would put one of these on his back um, at all times. And as you can see, I, I bought so many that I still have a whole box. I keep it because we sometimes go camping and stuff, so I'm sure this will come handy in another opportunity. Another thing you should take is sunscreen. The sun there will be very hot and you know, you're gonna be out on the street or on the beach a lot. And there is actually a sun cream th that I bought here from Australia which has insect repellent on it. And if I'm not mistaken, it's of the same brand, R.I.D. I think it's from the same brand. But I just couldn't find it for the video, but I wanted to mention it. And another thing mothers are usually concerned with, concerned with is what sunscreen can they use on their baby for sensitive skin. I do recommend the La Roche-Posay. 50 plus and um, I've used this in the first year of Leo's life. I still have a little bit left But yeah, this never gave my son any irritations. So it is one of the most expensive ones But you know We splurged for the little ones Now the thing that we took which was the most helpful was this gigantic mosquito net 
which really really came in handy it was actually meant to be an infant um, net so I thought it was going to be like a small thing which Leo would sleep in because he didn't have any vaccinations for mosquitoes but I ended up buying the biggest one and it would fit, fit easily on a queen size bed so, so the three of us slept in it every single night and that was helpful because it kept some mosquitoes out and you know if you were somewhere which wasn't that clean and there were insects or you know bugs they wouldn't get on us at least while we were sleeping and that really gave us peace of mind infectant wipes now what I am referring to I couldn't find one but I will try to put up a picture to show you what I'm referring to is the uh, Chico Kiko Chico baby disinfectant wipes they are little wipes that come in tiny bags in tiny individual bags which you can use to wipe their dummies or their bottles um, so it's something that can definitely come in handy if you are out on the street and their dummy falls on the floor or if their chew toy falls on the floor you know I'm, I'm pretty okay with things falling on, on the floor and my son playing with them again but when you are in a country which is a bit more dirty you know you don't know what was there or what was on the floor you just have to be a bit more careful with these things so disinfectant wipes is definitely something good to have if you know the duration of your trip and you know specifically how long you're going to be there for and your child is on formula you know you're using specific uh, baby nappies and stuff I would highly recommend just taking some with you um, you will find nappies and you will find formula at 7-elevens and at supermarkets I suppose but obviously it is not guaranteed that you're going to find the same brand that your son that your child is used to so I do recommend taking like a form the formula um, and nappies if you prefer using a specific brand if you know you know you will have roughly an idea of how long a packet will you know and a can will last you so plan ahead and take some with you now if you are sterilizing um, that can be a bit of a problem if you are bottle feeding your child uh, when I say problem it's just because you know you're not always gonna have access to a kitchen where you can sterilize your items but with that being said um, in your room you will most times you will have um, uh, a kettle so you can boil some bottled water and you can use the boiling water to sterilize your baby items um, so for that reason I would recommend taking a collapsible container which are just containers you know containers that your bottles would fit in but it, fo it falls down flat so it's easily packed in your bag and if you're going to take that route I highly recommend you purchase Milton tablets I don't know if these are available anywhere else I did get these I, I did have this these since Malta these are basically tablets that you break it in half and you place it in cooled boiled water and you just leave your baby bottles in there sterilizing which is something very handy for travel because you, then you just dump it this would be the necessities like the main necessities that I could think of but we did go a little bit extra and these are the extra items that we took simply because we knew we planned on doing activities we love doing activities with our little ones like canoeing you know we didn't know if we were gonna get on a quad bike or at some point we took these extra items just for peace of mind so I actually bought my son a toddler sized helmet because you know if you go if you hire a bike or you know you, you you might need a helmet it was a bit extra to carry around I will be honest but had we needed it at least I had it I also took a life jacket because when you go on boat trips or you go on canoeing trips they will provide um, life jackets uh, but you know what is the probability that they're gonna have one in a size one probably zero so you are better off taking your own life jacket same thing goes for a pool floaty um, we actually worked in collaboration with Swim Trainer Australia which is a brand that I highly highly recommend they have different sizes for the little ones um, and it's basically a floaty it goes around them and then it has a harness that secures on their back so relatively there is no way that they can get out of it and they can still walk in it which is pretty cool without it falling so I will leave, leave a link for that in the description below I do recommend that you invest in a good product like that because you know it provides 
peace of mind. We also took Leo's potty because he was potty training at the time and I didn't want his routine to break. I didn't want him to forget the potty. So I had to carry a travel potty with me. Another thing I took was raincoats. Now this is a bit of a gamble because you know, you will most probably get rain at some point when you are in Thailand but it can be sunny and we, we've done it numerous times we've left the hotel room when it was sunny I didn't take the raincoats and then it was pouring so, you know, maybe just buy those little ponchos if you want to have something on you because they're not heavy to carry around and always have them in your bag just in case <laughs> and another thing that we did need when we were there which we weren't aware of until the moment that we needed um, was a waterproof bag especially if you plan on going on like the island tours and stuff like that um, uh, a waterproof bag is something handy uh, you will find ones to purchase over there of course they can be a bit more expensive uh, but you know you have to buy what you have what you need we didn't even have a backpack so we just ended up buying the waterproof bag and use that as our bag for the day now just the last few warnings beware of cockroaches especially in Bangkok city <laughs> well Honestly, they're everywhere. They are everywhere. And you know, they're gonna you're gonna be walking past the sidewalk and they're and they're gonna be there and we freaked out like little girls, literally, all of us, including my partner, and uh, you just scream and people look at you and laugh at you, but it's not something that we're used to, but they are. And you know, I've been in food courts where I have seen cockroaches and I refuse to eat there, I refuse to sit there. But I, I guess it's just a warning about the cleanliness thing that I was saying. Like imagine you sit in that food court where cockroaches are walking on the tables and you put your baby's dummy on the table. You need to have a disinfectant wipe for that. Locals are super friendly, so it's not something to be aware of. But like you will get these people selling little toys and stuff which will just walk up to you and hand your kid a toy and then expect you to buy it. You are free to like gamble a price if you're not happy with the price they are asking. But you know, it's just not very convenient when they work up your child to want this thing and then you don't actually buy it. So just be aware of that. And on the same note that locals are extremely, extremely nice. Like even when we were at Phuket, at Patong Beach, they're like party street, the red, the Patong Beach street where you will get bars and you know girls and stuff like that they were actually really nice, they, they were still like trying to speak to my partner and stuff but they saw that we were a family and they were just mainly focus on Leo and say how cute he was and stuff so they are very nice and I'm sure you will enjoy your Thailand trip with your family there is absolutely no reason why you should not go you just have to be aware of certain things and do certain things in certain ways um, for them to work out for your family we do have a vlog series from Thailand from our Thailand trip so I will make sure I will link those in the description below I will also try to link, link any products if I find them online and yeah I hope this video I'm sure this video was a bit long but I hope that you enjoyed it so if you did make sure you give the video a thumbs up subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next video